Hey guys, Clove here, and I'm back today with another video. And we are on a different world because of my computer problem. But, um, so just, apolo I apologize in advance for having such a noobish kind of way to display commands. I normally would have something built, but I just haven't been able to get a access to the old little area that we had, so I'll probably build a new one. But anyway, for this video, this is one that you guys, a couple of you, have been wanting to see for a while. Um, and I haven't gotten to it because of all the issues I've been having. But it's basically, it's kind of like the free-for-all winner detector that I made previously. I have an old video about that. Um, but this is in a more general form, but you can use it. And I'll show you some examples at the end. But this is basically counting players, which is really important to do um, if you're making like a mini game to be able to count players and manipulate the information that you have on those players. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a new scoreboard. So scoreboard objectives add players dummy, just like that. Boom. So you create a dummy scoreboard of players. Then what you're going to want is some form of clock. It doesn't need to be a fast one if you don't want it to be. Ooh, new advancement. We are in 1.12 right now, if you're wondering. Um, but it doesn't have to be a fast clock. It can be medium speed. It doesn't really matter. I like to use these clocks right here for mini games uh, instead of having a bunch of the big ones because you're able to, you know, put the little comparators coming out of these and do whatever you want. So that's what I like to do. So at the beginning, you're going to do scoreboard players set at e tag equals game players zero so we also need a armor stand to keep the score on so we are going to do slash summon armor stand one right here tags so i'm putting game but i would put the name or a short version of whatever game you're making so if you're making a uh, cops and robbers game i would just do robbers or cop uh, something you can type really easily and not forget. So you want it to be invulnerable marker and no gravity. Just so that it doesn't fly away. And then we're going to click it. And now we have our little armor stand here. Um, so this is going to set a score to zero. So let's put that in the sidebar. So let's play sidebar players. Okay. So I'm pretty sure you guys can see it. The screen might cut it off. I'm still messing around with the... Um, oh, I put the wrong thing in the sidebar. Sorry. Okay, players. So um, you guys can probably see it. It says zero right now. Um, we are going to make some fake players, which will be mobs, but you can do this for anything. So it's pretty easy. All you have to do is right after this, you pick an area or pick a place or pick a player. You have to use some kind of selector. So for we're going to do a couple examples here. We've got a fenced in area. Let's make it about a three by three, two by two. And we get, we're going to find the coordinates of this. So it's at negative nine, five, eight. I wish I was closer to zero. 56, negative 508. Okay, so we got those coordinates. We are going to do slash execute at E. So if you're doing this for like a minigame where you're trying to count players inside that pin, or maybe you're trying to count players inside an arena to see if there's a last man standing, um, you're going to create a area around, you're going to either use radius or you're going to use a square bounding box. This is a square bounding box. You can do radius from the center. Okay, so then you pick a point in the center arena by doing slash execute at E um, as said before you can i'm putting at e so that you can see this but if you're just doing players you would just do at a um, or maybe specify if you're doing entities and you're picking the point so this point is xyz is that and i can do radius of five but for your more specificity i'm going to use the bounding box which will be however many in this direction so we are going one two three in this direction and three in that direction um but you one, two, three, yeah. So we're going to do dx equals three, dz equals three, and then we'll just go up a couple. To make it look fancier, I'll just do dy equals three, dz equals three. That just looks a lot neater. Um, I'm also going to make this one type equals pig. We're gonna pretend pigs are players, excuse me. And we're going to do scoreboard players add at e tag equals game players one. So it's basically going to execute at all the pigs in here and add one for each pig that's there. So if we put a pig in here and let's get a diamond sword ready too. So we put that in and now it's one, put that in, now it's two, put that in, now it's three, and it goes between three and zero so that it updates. So check this out. So it's three and then now it's two. Okay. Because since it's adding for each one, you want to make sure it's reset to zero. Otherwise it'll just keep counting up. There you go. Now there's five. 
So now what you can do is once the, now this is a little example, once the game has started, you can go like this and you can do slash test for at e tag equals game score underscore players equals one. So if there's at least one, basically between any, any less than one. So if nobody's there, then I guess nobody wins. But if there's one player left, then it will do slash you can do whatever you want to the player. You can do slash TP that thing that's in there um, to, I'll just teleport it to me so you can see what happens. So here we have five and I'm going to kill a couple. And we are basically going to pretend that these guys are hurting each other. Last player standing. And now the pig is teleported over to me. So he won. Okay. So as you can see, that's kind of a last man standing detection. You test if there's one left. Um, you can also pick do radius um, as well. This is going. This is just updating because it's also zero. So zero counts two. I like to include zero just in case two people kill themselves at the same time. The game still resets. That's a pretty good idea. Uh, now we have another version where you can do this thing here. We're going to just uh, divert it. We're going to move the the chain over here. Okay. Check this out. Okay, so now we're going to do slash execute at a tag equals in game. So this is what I like to do um, for my games. So I'm basically going to, I'll do at e tag equals in game. So basically when people are in the game or thought to be in the game, then it will make keep count of them, which is important for games where say you have turns and you want to know how many players there are to give turns to players, but that's way more complicated. Um, and then we just have the same thing. Uh, like that and there you go um, so now we are going to summon some pigs that have the tag of in game and they can be anywhere they want in the world instead of the radius so they can be all over there scoreboard players tag at e type equals pig add in game and there you go now it's saying there's nine of them and if i kill one of them it will update the scoreboard to say uh, eight now it says eight seven and this keeps track of entities, like counts a certain amount of entities that have a certain uh, tag on them. You can also do it with certain scoreboards. So if you're trying to figure out how many players have five points, and if two players have five points, then uh, it will do something like set one of them to only four, if you don't want people to have the same number, or something like that. You can do that. Um, there you go. So now it knows that there's no more or one. It knows that there's one or less. Uh, entities with the tag of in-game. So it's pretty uh, pretty simple. I wanted to show this to you guys because it's really important for most mini games at all just to detect a winner. Uh, a lot of times it's counting a player or some entity. Um, if you want to do it, you can also do it with teams. You can do if you're making like a team game and you're trying to, it's like team elimination. I'll do scoreboard teams add red. I can summon a bunch of pigs that have a team of red, and it will count how many pigs there are in the world that are on that team. Scoreboard teams join red at e type equals pig. And as you can see, now we are getting a number of, wait, at e team equals red. And now we're getting a count of five because there's five players on that team. Um, then if you wanted, for example, to do a team elimination game, you would have a bunch of pigs or I mean a bunch of players on Team Red, a bunch of players on Team Blue, and every time they die, they would leave the team, uh, or maybe they would be tagged if they're on the team, and every time they die, they would lose the tag. You have to mess around with that yourself. So guys, that's pretty much all there is to this one. If you guys liked this tutorial and found it useful, go ahead and leave a like. I would really appreciate that. Um, also, if you're not already, consider subscribing for more of these kind of tutorial videos. Uh, other than that, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all later.